Hey guys, it is done. It's done. So what am I talking about? So I'm talking about the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam. It's all complete. First of all, let me just start by saying congratulations because it's not every day we hear in, in Africa a big mega project is actually completing, right? So that is a good news, first of all. But now the key question that we want to find out about. So is it going to bring cooperation or is it going to bring conflict? So that's the question we want to look at, right? And that we're going to answer that just in a minute. Stay tuned with us, right? See you in a minute. Hey, 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 everybody. So how are you doing? My name is Tony. I'm the founder and CEO of Renewables in Africa. So what we do is we raise awareness about re uh, renewables energy, but also sustainability that you know already, right? So if you're interested to break or expand into Africa, you want to talk to us because we are your eco bridge to this market. And what we can do for you is to bring visibility leads, but also deals. Or if you say, I want to decarbonize, again, we are your eco bridge to so reach out to us and we can take you to a sustainable pathway and we can help you with anything that's related to carbon footprint assessment and also carbon reduction strategy. So if you have this kind of question, don't hesitate to reach out to us, right? So first of all, I'm talking about the GIRD, that's how we call it, right? Which stands for Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam. So he has completed now, it's completed, yeah? But it's not as simple as that. On one side, it's a great achievement for Ethiopia. On the other side, it poses a lot of questions for neighboring countries, right? But let me first of all show you the little video because I think it was a surprise for me just to find out that it completed just a few days ago. But I want to share that with you, and then after that, we can come back and have this conversation. Yeah, excellent. Let's do it now. Ethiopia's Prime Minister Abi Ahmed said on Thursday that a controversial multi-billion dollar mega dam on the Blue Nile was now complete. Abi told lawmakers that the dam would be inaugurated in September. The completion of the project, known as the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam, is a major milestone for the country. The construction began in 2011. With its 1,800 meters long and 175 meters high, it is now the largest in Africa. But it became a source of tensions with neighboring Egypt and Sudan over equitable sharing of the water. Egypt said the dam would deplete its share of Nile River waters and has referred to it as an existential threat. Negotiations between Ethiopia and Egypt over the years have not led to a pact. Questions remain about how much water Ethiopia will release downstream if a drought occurs. The dam began producing power in 2022. It is expected to ultimately produce over 6,000 megawatts of electricity, double Ethiopia's current output. The country insists the dam is a crucial development for its population and would help pull millions out of poverty. Okay, okay, okay. I think we have seen that, yeah. So, excellent. So, as you can see, that's a massive project, 6 gigawatts of power. That's huge, right? So, like I said, it's double what. Ethiopia is, is, is consuming that day. So, as I say, it's a massive project. It's not every day that we see completion to such a project, right? So, it's the largest hydro project in Africa now. I think precisely, it's not just 6 gigawatts, it's, it's almost 6.5 gigawatts, right? So, it is built on the Blue Nile and it's vital to about 250 million people across those three countries. So, Ethiopia, you heard about it. So, Sudan, but also Egypt and is intended to power development and also reduce poverty. You know how much power is important in those countries, right? And literally, there's no doubt that it will transform Ethiopia economy, definitely. As you can see, the uh, prime minister, so Abiy Ahmed, so he's declared that not only it's complete, but it's gonna be inaugurated in September, 2025. But that's also has brought a lot, of, a lot of questions from neighboring countries, you know, especially Egypt. So Egypt has, uh, as, 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 as I said that, so this is a unilateral, um, right, from, from, from Ethiopia, and there's no leaky binding agreement on drought management, also water security. So if Egypt is saying that, you're probably going to be asked a question, hey, Tony, why is Egypt making an issue out of it? Isn't it good news? Yeah, first of all, a great project, could be helpful people, potentially. But you got to understand as well the background because so Egypt has had a historical dependence on the river Nile, right? Because back in the day, the colonial power, when they obviously distributed the management of this resource, so they've actually attributed something like a 
55 cubic meters per year, you know, to Egypt and 18 cubic meters per year to Sudan. So for a total of a row of about 84. For the rest, I guess, was, was there. So uh, 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 it was for the neighboring countries. So that's how it was split. So Kelly was highly favoring Egypt and Sudan and giving us war well to Egypt almost like a, the veto power for any development, any project that come into the river Nile. That actually was what uh, was there. But clearly, you know, upstream countries like Ethiopia never agreed to that because they say, come on, this is not a fair agreement, right? And they've obviously uh, disputed and put forward that they also have some right with regard to these vital results. So that's where, so the challenge as always uh, is gonna be. So when you see such a massive project being undertaken, so there's a number of fears, especially from Egyptian side, about the water flow, you know, and also how drought is gonna be managed. So when drought out, it occurs, because you know if climate change, it's gonna happen, right? So will Ethiopia release enough flow or water, you know, from their side or not? Sudan has always complained about that. And actually they're accusing to Ethiopia of undermining international cooperation, yeah? But from the Ethiopian side, what they say is actually is 60% of Ethiopians still lack access to electricity. And the River Nile, the GERD, it's pretty much seen over there as a national pride and a development lifeline, yeah? So for them, there's no way the country can develop if it doesn't tap into that resource, right? And Addis Ababa has called for equitable and reasonable water use because they disputed the agreement that was done in the past during the colonial time, right? So when you look at that, you say, okay, what is now gonna happen? Because ultimately, I'm sure both sides have the argument. Ultimately, what you wanna see is collaboration between those, uh, between those two sides, right? So what, 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 what's going to happen? So that's the question I was asking. So what do you think it is? So drop that in comments. By the way, if you haven't liked the video yet, what are you waiting for? It's time for you just to click like, you know, drop a comment and share people that you know, right? So because what we're talking about is very serious. And you know, we're bringing about news about renewables energy, making sure that you are informed as an investor, as a professional in the sector, or somebody just loves the sector and want to know more, right? So. Is cooperation still possible? Yeah, I would say I would like to think that could be that could be the case, right? So the 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 challenge here, it's as I say. So the agreement Egypt Egypt and Sudan was referring to is the 1959 Nile Water Agreement. You know that was obviously back in the day. Like I say, it was from Ethiopian perspective, heavily favoring Egypt, but also Sudan, and they could not accept on that, right? So clearly there was something that needed to be reworked there, right? Because clearly you can have an agreement that only talking about two countries and not the neighboring, right? So it has to be reviewed. But at the same time as well from Egypt's side, there's also some question that needs to be uh, sort of uh, raised, yep. Yeah? So is cooperation possible? There has been a lot of negotiation over the last past years, you know, especially led by the African Union, but there has not been any binding agreement uh, so far. There has been a declaration of, princ of, of principle. It was in 2015. That was between Egypt. That was between um, Sudan and Ethiopia, where they say, hey, we got to come together, work together, and see how those key questions could be addressed. There was clearly enough of there, but nothing actually binding. and. Egypt wanted to reach a binding stage before Ethiopia could continue, could, could, could consider continuing the project, you know, which has not been possible. So that's why they've seen Ethiopia moving on a unilateral way, right? So that is uh, what, uh, what uh, we've seen. Now, could a new African leadership or a third party mediation be possible? Talk about third party people like UAE, China can revive talk. Possible. I personally like to see an African actor stepping up, and I know South Africa also step up at some point. Yeah, so it's possible. The, the US as well. I know at the moment they tap into everybody's results, right? <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised to see Mr. Trump maybe jump in a bit of that. Let's see. So, I think what kind of scenario can we can we see in here? So I could see 
you know, three cases. Let me talk about the best case. The best case is that the GERDs catalyze regional energy trade, you know, and water sharing deal, which is what Ethiopia is actually uh, mentioned, uh, talking about, saying that they are waiting to explore that deal, right? So I can only that I'm not taking side, by the way. I'm just stating what I've heard. What I've heard. But that would be the best case scenario. They can all the three of them sit around the table, work at a deal that works for all of them. That would be good for the region, good for the continent, good for the world. Yeah. So the worst case scenario, obviously, it's there is a diplomatic breakdown, legal action, which could potentially lead to a military posturing. Because those are two big military power from Africa perspective, Ethiopia and Egypt. You don't want to see that. Nobody wanna see that. I'm very much hoping and believe that we're gonna to have to avoid it. Yeah. But what is then the most likely scenario? It's to have some sort of a fragile coexistence, you know, unless a bold diplomatic steps are taken. That's actually on, on the back of what we've seen over the last 10 years. Because these dam, as you know, I started construction in 2011, right? That's 14 years ago. So that's what we could see. So for me, GERD, it's more than a dam. You know, it's a test case for me on how Africa handled cross-border infrastructure. So could it become a model of collaboration or another missed opportunity? Only time will tell. And I want you to let me know what you're feeling about that, right? Because it's an important central question. So what is your take? That's what I'm going to ask you, you know, about this. Are we going to have conflict cooperation? I like to drop your thoughts in the comments. And if your company is navigating sustainability, infrastructure, strategy in Africa, so definitely reach out to us, you know. Definitely book a meeting, I'd like to have one to one with me, or explore our AI companion. I'm just going to drop the link there. So where you can have more information about Africa. And they're more than happy to share as much, uh, as much insight as possible. Yeah, so that's what I had to say for today. Have a great Sunday. Have a good week tomorrow. Take care, guys. Bye-bye.